Marriage is an adventure like going to war. Gilbert K. Chesterton. Game face. We all have one. It takes your smile and sharpens it into a grimace. Rocked by an emotional earthquake, the gentle planes of your face shift into stone. The happiness once beaming from your eyes is now refracted inward, focused with laser-sharp concentration on the dark matter at hand. Harry's is one I don't recognize. I'll admit it. For the past few weeks, his dimpled smile and courtly manners have been the icing on the cake of my day. And while courting the Paradise Heights League board, he was sweetness and light. Now, though, devoid of any joy, it has curdled into a snarl. What I'm seeing now sends icicles into my veins. He's ready to do battle with Dee Dee, the Ice Queen. Temple won't be the only collateral damage. In the side view mirror, I see Jake. He sits silently in the back, just staring out the window, his damp, red-rimmed eyes, as well as, are as wide as those of the ghoul in the screen. I can only imagine what he's thinking, that all this, not just the lost game, but his father's fall from grace, even his parents' breakup, is his fault. If I could, I'd reach back there and hold his hand. And yet, as the mother of one of his friends, the only place I hold in his life is that of an abstract acquaintance. What am I doing here anyway? Almost as if reading my mind, Harry places his fingers on my arm and pats it absentmindedly. That tells me all I need to know. I'm here because I'm the only friend Harry has in this gated, well-landscaped corner of the world. We pull up in front of the Paradise Heights Waldessori Preschool and Kindergarten just in time to see Dee Dee walking out with Temple and Miss Judith, the head of school. Dee Dee's silk blouse and cashmere slacks look almost militaristic next to Miss Judith's gauzy flowing skirt and Birkenstocks. If Miss Judith's attire isn't the broadest hint that she's in the community's one and only hold back from the days when Paradise Heights was a hippie commune, hence the first portion of its name before being elevated into the economic stratosphere. Her headscarf, tied over flowing gray curls, is a dead giveaway. Whatever Dee Dee is saying has Miss Judith shaking her head in dismay. This causes the beaded fringe on her scarf to jiggle. She glances sympathetically at Temple, whose eyes are starred with tears, her pillowed lips bitten into a pout. The way the car screeches as it comes to a halt undermines Harry's attempts at indifference. Jake slumps down when his mother comes into view. Either he's hoping she doesn't see him and ask him to recap his inglorious day, or he has his own bone to pick with her. Stay here, growls Harry. I don't know if he's talking to me or to Jake, but in the mood he's in, neither of us plan on disobeying him. He's out of the car in a flash. Because he keeps his vo voice low and level, I can't hear every word, but I do catch phrases, very sorry, and won't happen again. Miss Judith nods sympathetically, but tired uncertainty shades her pale gray eyes. It is obvious that whatever Dee Dee has been telling her has colored her view of Harry. Temple slips her hand into her father's, but does not let go of Dee Dee's either. In fact, she squeezes it even tighter, as if to prove, if only to herself, that they are still joined in some way. This only seems to amp up their feelings toward each other and their voices. I've told you, I've got it under control. Harry insists. My God, Harry, I wouldn't be here now if that were the case. And if Temple feels more comfortable going home with me, the way Dee Dee's voice trails away makes the offer seem so inviting. I'm surprised her daughter doesn't leap at it. When it comes to their parents, all children possess innate neediness, not Temple. She knows a game is afoot. 
Her way to change the rules to suit her needs is brilliant. No, Mommy, no. You can just come home with us, she states matter-of-factly. The adults stare at her as if she's just landed from another planet. Harry's game face, dampened by tears he can't wipe away quickly enough, softens into doubtful hope. Dee Dee, on the other hand, frosts solid with determination. Her teeth are tiny daggers, more of a snarl than a smile. Damn it, Temple! Jake's eruption echoes with pain. Opening the door, his, he yells, don't you get it? She doesn't want to come home. Not ever. Ah, oh, just get in the car. Now? All eyes turn toward us. Temple's emotional Geiger counter has picked up on her brother's anger as only a sibling's can. <laughs> Unlike the adults who patronize her with cheery half-lies that never pay off with the only golden ticket that counts, her mom and dad together again, Jake Bellows, Jake's bellow tells her what she needs to know, even if it isn't what she wants to hear. Her parents will never love each other again, ever. In Jake's opinion, it's all Dee Dee's fault. Can't his sister see this too? In Jake's, this sudden realization is too much for the little girl. As if she's letting go of all hope, a rivulet of urine runs down Temple's leg, mm -hmm. seemingly at the same pace as, as the tears streaming down her face. Despite this, Harry scoops her up into his arms and heads for the car, Miss Judith clucking soothingly beside him, hoping to hush her student's heart-wrenching howls. All mothers break apart when confronted with their children's grief, and Dee Dee is no exception. Fault lines of anguish transform her flawless veneer of a face from haughty to sorrowful. She runs after her child, but stops cold when she notices me in the car. Dee Dee realizes this battle is lost, but the war is still to be won. Her eyes narrow and her frown inverts into a smirk. You've hired some shop girl from Nordy's? Oh, now, that's rich. Why couldn't she have picked up Temple? Doesn't she drive? At first, Harry doesn't catch on that she's talking about me, but Miss Judith does. Relieved at the chance to set something straight, she trills nervously, Dee Dee, that's Lisa Harper, Olivia's mommy. After what I've just seen, I don't expect a cheery hello. Still, even a stiff nod of recognition would certainly go a long way to clearing the air. But no, Dee Dee isn't apologetic. She's shocked. Suddenly it dawns on me that hitching a ride with a soon-to-be ex is not the best way to reintroduce yourself to a woman who never remembers who you are, no matter how many times she runs into you. From Dee Dee's granite stare, I'm assured she won't forget me ever again. I can't help but watch her in the rearview mirror as we drive off. She, too, keeps me in her sights. Dee has a new target. Thank you. <laughs>